We have more information regarding the Xbox Activision Blizzard deal. Now it's looking like there's a higher chance that it is going to go through. All right, guys, before we get into this, hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this video and you like daily video game content. So it seems like almost every day now there is more information about the Activision Blizzard deal, but pretty much all speculation. There has been really nothing concrete that we have seen recently besides the actual documents that were presented from PlayStation and from Microsoft and Xbox onto why this deal should be blocked or why this deal should go through. But everything we've seen after that has pretty much just been speculators talking about the FTC and whether they are going to vote this deal to pass or whether they're going to vote this deal to be blocked. And recently, the most recent thing that we have heard so far is that there's apparently a rift at the FTC where there could be a split vote, which would mean that Lena Khan, the head of the FTC, won't want that to happen, which would make the actual deal be passed to show that there's unity and strength among the FTC. Now, specifically a couple of days ago, this was from the New York Post, this article that came out and said, a rift at the FTC stirs hopes for Microsoft's $69 billion Activision merger sources. Now, this goes kind of against what we saw, I think it was last week from Politico, where they were saying that there's a chance it's gonna be blocked, which is why I say all of this stuff is just complete speculation. We don't know who actually knows and who actually has that information as to whether this is gonna happen or this isn't gonna happen, but they say this down here. Some of the Democrats might be more comfortable with a settlement that specifically has to do with concessions and whether this deal, if it does go through, what is Xbox gonna have to do to make everybody happy? Tino is here to say, while the identity of the dissenting Democrat couldn't immediately be confirmed, DC sources following the situation pointed to Slaughter, who has been acting FTC chair until last year when President Joe Biden installed 33-year-old Khan at the helm of the powerful regulatory agency. And they're referring to the fact that it seems like as of this moment, there is a rift in the voting. There is a dissenting politician who just, I guess, doesn't want this deal to happen and would leave the vote at a two to one in terms of this deal going through and then it would be up to Lena Khan in order to vote whether it's going to be blocked or it's not going to be blocked. And as the head of the FTC, if you're voting to bring this to a 2-2 tie, it kind of makes you look sort of weak. It says a Democratic defection will leave Khan with a 2-2 tie in any vote to clamp down on the merger, a result that would not only effectively okay the deal, but also throw Khan's authority over the agency into question. That accordingly is a vote that Khan isn't likely to risk, according to DC insiders. Lena would probably not put things in a position for that to take place, so instead of having that vote, she would make the motion to approve the settlement. The way out is to say we got a great deal and we only got it because we've been badasses. So I mean, take that for what you will in terms of where this thing is going. I mean, this is just ridiculous stuff. It, again, it sounds like it's literally just coming down to politics. It's not even looking at the facts of what this deal is and what it does for gamers and what it does for the video game industry. Essentially, it just seems like there's some political stuff going on here where they just want to be difficult and go to a 2-2 tie if that happens and if any of this is actually true. But then we got this and this is from the Wall Street Journal and Brad Smith, the president of Microsoft had an article published and he talks about why the Activision Blizzard acquisition is actually good for gamers. So keep in mind, this is just an opinion piece from Brad Smith, who's obviously going to say good things about this deal going through. But he says some stuff that, I mean, most people are thinking this in terms of looking at this from the video game industry. He also just kind of mentions everything that has happened. First of all, he talks about the industry as a whole. And right now, Xbox is the third place in console gaming behind PlayStation and behind Nintendo, and that they have no meaningful presence in terms of mobile within the games industry, which is a segment that generates the most revenue and is the fastest growing. And I would agree, like Xbox has no presence, but I guess you could also say that PlayStation has no presence and Nintendo has a small presence. They do have their mobile games, which I actually think make a ton of money, but the majority of mobile revenue goes to Google and Apple. And this is something that we have heard about Microsoft wanting to start their own store, which would potentially try and rival and compete with Google and Apple, which I think would be a good thing to get in there and to try to create more competition in that space because it is extremely dominated right now. And it almost seems like there's no way anybody is gonna be able to get in besides Google and Apple. He then goes on to talk about how this acquisition has to do with innovating and benefiting the consumers and using the subscription service 
to allow people to access games wherever they want with the cloud. Stuff that we've talked about multiple times, stuff that makes Xbox very consumer friendly, which I think makes them far more consumer friendly than anything PlayStation does. And PlayStation almost being anti-consumer in some of the things that they do. When you're able to play your games anywhere, it's just way better than actually being locked to the console. And he actually compares this deal as the blockbuster Netflix thing where Sony is the blockbuster and they're just worried about the rise of Netflix, which we know what happened with that, right? Blockbuster went out of business and that's not going to happen with PlayStation, but if they don't adjust and they are always continuing doing the same thing. Like I think if PlayStation doesn't continue to expand on their PlayStation Plus service and, and continue to just add more value to their subscription style of stuff, it is going to hurt them in the long run. And I think it's going to hurt them significantly. And that isn't Xbox's fault. That's PlayStation's fault. They they have so many answers right in front of them with their first party games, with their back catalog of IPs, but they haven't tapped into any of that right now. They're still in that cycle of recycling the same titles over and over and over again because they know that they sell and they know that they make a lot of money and they know that the production costs of those games, for example, The Last of Us Remake is far lower than making a brand new IP or revitalizing an IP that has been made for years and making that thing from the ground up. Now, Brad Smith continues on here and says the main supposed potential anti-competitive risk Sony raises is that Microsoft would stop making Call of Duty available on PlayStation, but that is economically irrational, something that we've talked about multiple times on this channel. It makes no sense at all. For Xbox to take Call of Duty off of PlayStation, they are not going to be able to make up the amount of money that they would end up losing just through the Xbox network if they take the game off of PlayStation. Not even with the amount of Game Pass subscribers that are going to increase. It is just one of those like anomalies, one of those massive games that it's impossible. You want to keep that everywhere. It's like a Minecraft type of thing. The fan base is just so cemented across every single platform. There's cross-play. You're gonna be making money off of every single microtransaction, no matter where they're making this microtransaction. So it makes no sense for them to take it off PlayStation, and they're not going to. And with that, they confirm here that they did offer that 10-year contract to make each new Call of Duty release available on PlayStation the same day that it comes to Xbox. Now, they don't mention Game Pass, and I'm, I'm assuming this deal, if it does go through, means that Call of Duty it's going to be available day and date, both PlayStation and Xbox, but it's also going to be available day and date on Xbox Game Pass. And then he goes on here to say we're open to providing the same commitment to other platforms and making it legally enforceable by regulators in the US, the UK and the European Union. I'm not sure what other platforms he would be talking about other than Nintendo because it's pretty much everywhere else. It's on mobile, it's on PC, it's on, it's on PlayStation, it's on Xbox add it to the cloud, I guess, which would be Xbox Game Pass and then Nintendo. But it's already been on Nintendo previously. The last one was Call of Duty Ghosts on the Nintendo Wii U. So I wouldn't be surprised if it did actually come back to the Nintendo platform, especially if Nintendo re releases a Nintendo Switch 2 that's more powerful, that would actually allow you to have a great experience with the AAA version of Call of Duty. And then finally, he talks about the unionization stuff and the communication workers of America. If you've been following that at all, basically what has happened here is the communication workers of America support this deal because Xbox and Microsoft agreed on certain things such as being neutral when it comes to the formation of unions at the studios at Activision. And when they come over to Xbox, if the deal goes through that they'll support those unions and they will honor them. And then any unions that want to be formed after the deal goes through. And Microsoft is proving that they are true to their word, at least for now, when it comes to unionization as workers at ZeniMax Media, the QA workers are now looking to form a union and Microsoft and Xbox have been neutral on the discussions for this. It says here, a group of more than 300 employees at ZeniMax Media, a Maryland-based video game maker owned by Microsoft, has begun voting on whether to form the company's only union in the United States. The vote among quality assurance employees at ZeniMax, which includes prominent studios like Bethesda Game Studios, is taking place under an informal agreement in which Microsoft is staying neutral Workers can sign a union authorization card as some began doing last month or wait in anonymously for or against unionization on an electronic platform that opened on Friday. So they're staying true to their word. There are going to be more unions formed at Xbox Game Studios from the Bethesda side of things and from the Activision side of things. And from what Xbox is saying, they will honor that type of stuff. And that's going to be huge, I think, once they review these files and come to the decision as to whether this deal is going to pass or not from the FTC and from 
the CMA and the European Union. So just some recent revelations I wanted to update you guys on in terms of the Activision, Blizzard deal and Xbox. And again, it just seems so speculative. Nobody actually knows. Everyone says sources, everyone says this, but one week you have one article, one uh, publishment or whatever, Politico saying one thing, then the next week you have New York Post saying something else. What is there to believe? We won't know, but it seems like things are, are gonna be moving forward. And you know what? We will know sooner rather than later. We're getting to the end of the year. There's still tons of games to play. And whether it goes through or not, the big thing for me, like I've said multiple times, all I care about is these games coming over to Xbox Game Pass, especially with the recent announcement of the rise in the first party Xbox Game Studios games to $70. But that's it for me, guys. Let me know your thoughts on all of this stuff. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support. And I'll catch you in the next video.